In this presentation, we're going to look at some of the common uh, chemistry lab equipment that we'll be using when we eventually get back into um, the classroom. Um, so yeah, I do require you, you know what the equipment name is, what it looks like, and what its function is. So this is a good reference for the assignment that will follow this um, presentation. Um, number one, you will need to um, wear an apron, um, some kind of covering that um, I have them um, for you to wear. I have both these rubberized types that are somewhat good. They're getting pretty beaten up over the years. So there's some really good ones and there's not some really good ones. It's kind of always a first come first serve when we're doing lab. Um, if you don't like these, you can wear um, a disposable plastic one um, that I also have. But I do insist that if you're cooking in my kitchen, you better have an apron on. Um, a next very common piece of equipment um, that most of you will refer to as a cup, but in chemistry these are referred to as beakers. Um, they're used to primarily um, hold solutions and also to heat them. Many of them, as you will see, are graduated along the sides, and a lot of you confuse them with another piece of equipment called a graduated cylinder, um, but this is technically a beaker. Another piece of equipment that is used a lot to pick up things are referred to as tongs. And we actually have two kinds of tongs. We have what we call um, crucible tongs. And you can always identify them based upon this really narrow, fine tip at the end. They're used to pick up um, what we would call a crucible. We'll be actually using crucibles in here. Um, and of course, they're used to pick up hot things. Um, another one that will more commonly used will be this um, particular um, tong that is referred to as a beaker tong. It has a wider um, end. It usually has a rubberized um, type surface that you would use to pick up, um, say, a boiling um, water beaker and move it. Um, the rubberized surface allows you to get a better grip on a glass object. You will find in your chemistry um, supply drawer that you should have both. Finally, this is one that most students like to use. We do use this a lot in here, um, is the Bunsen burner. This is going to be our main heat source, one of our main heat sources. We also use hot plates, um, but this is one that we use um, gas to light, like in your furnace. Um, I'm really strict on the procedures on how to use a Bunsen burner. We will deal with that when we get to it in a lab situation so that nobody catches on fire and I have to put you out or that sort of thing. And especially this year when we're in the COVID situation, we want to um, be aware of that. Our next um, tool that we will be using is referred to as a clay triangle. Hence, it forms kind of this little triangle, and it has these heat-resistant clay um, um, sections to it that would allow um, you to um, place a funnel through. It holds a funnel. Um, later, you'll see in a setup situation how that would work. This dude here is referred to as an Erlenmeyer flask. It is used primarily to mix solutions. You'll see too that it, it has kind of this cone type shape, has some graduations along the side. Um, it's named after a gentleman called Erlenmeyer um, who developed it. It's used primarily when we mix um, solutions. I use it in the chemical store prep room. Uh, you will also be using it in a few of the different labs that we're hoping to get to this year if we ever make it back to the classroom. Funnels. Funnels are used for filtration. Most of you, I think, are familiar with what a funnel would look like. This is one that we have in our chemistry classroom. Um, we will use it for filtering, and you'll use it probably in conjunction with another filtering um, apparatus called a filter paper, um, which is like a coffee filter, if you're familiar with that, or a tea bag filter. Um, but we'll be using those in class. We will also use um, a glass a lot. One of them is called a glass stirring rod. This is where we'll use to mix up things, especially if they're in a test tube and it's kind of hard to get them to mix without using this rod to go in and kind of break them up and mix them. 
but because they're glass, you got to be careful. They do break if you drop them, obviously. Um, and again, you will find um, a glass drain rod in your chemical um, supply cupboard. This one you should be familiar with from earlier science classes. I'm sure this is referred to as a graduated cylinder. It's used to measure liquid volume. You'll see that it has graduation marks along the side. This one is measured in millimeters, um, or excuse me, milliliters, because millimeters are a length measure. Um, generally, we will use various sizes of these. So this one will measure up to 100 milliliters of solution. Um, but there are some that can go as high as a liter of solution or 500 milliliters of solution or as low as 10. Um, so it'll be varying, but generally um, when we're needing to use a graduated cylinder in lab, I would have those probably on the lab cart. I usually don't keep these in your um, storage um, cupboards because other science um, classes need them when we have a limited supply. And because they are glass, they do break easily. Usually they have this ring around them that if they do tip over, you, the glass won't come in contact with the lab counter and shatter and break. But that's not always the case. Things do break. Um, pipettes. These are these little, and they're plastic and disposable. They're like an eyedropper. You know, we use them to, of course, suck up solution and transfer it from one um, container to the other, like a test tube to another. We will be using ring stands um, a lot. They're used as a device that we can, uh, well, say on this device here called the ring, um, that you can place different things, beakers and that, with a heat source underneath to heat. You can also attach test tubes to it. Um, they're, they're primarily used a lot in, in the labs that we will be doing, especially our fourth quarter um, lab section of the class where you're doing analytical analysis. Um, you'll use this device a lot and you'll become very familiar with it. This is the ring support that attaches to the ring stand via this section here, this clip. Um, we basically can put a gauze wire apparatus here called a wire gauze, set a beaker on it, put a flame under it, and cook away. Safety goggles. Biggie. You must wear safety goggles. Um, and in this year, you will also have to wear a mask. So you'll have mask, safety goggles, and an apron as your clothing that you will be um, having in lab. Uh, goggles will be sterilized after every class, so um, we and unfortunately they fit so tightly on your face that they do can sometimes steam up just depending on your personal body temperature. Um, but they do have little vents along the side that will let air and steam out. Um, but we will talk about uh, an, an additional cleaning procedure. Um, with all of the equipment that we will be using this year um, when we eventually get back into the classroom. Test tubes, you'll be using a lot of them. Of course, they're used to hold liquids, smaller amounts. Well, this is, you know, a big tool for any science class, chemistry especially. I think most of you know that. But again, just a reminder, test tubes are glass. They don't bounce when dropped. They break very easily and you'll need to um, follow the cleanup and safety procedures of, of cleaning up any broken um, parts. Test tube brushes, of course, are what we're gonna to use to clean out the test tubes with. Uh, nobody leaves my lab until everything is cleaned. Um, and you will also then, after we clean this year, have to sterilize everything because all counters and everything will have to be cleaned and sterilized. Test tube holders. This um, apparatus here is used to pick up a test tube, especially if it's hot and you're heating it. You don't want to grab glass with your um, bare hands. You know, you can't really tell by looking if glass is hot or cold. I always assume that it's hot and we would use this. This is very easy. You just grab it, pinch it, it opens up. You can put it around the test tube and then carry it very easily. Test tube racks. We've got both wooden and plastic versions. This is simply used to hold your test tubes in, and these pegs are used to, when you clean your test tube out, to put it, the test tube on it upside down so that it can dry. That's usually how I know that you're done. We just leave those out on the counter until they're dry. Utility clamp. This is a device that um, attaches to the ring stand. You can actually put a test tube here and hold it. Works really well. 
um, versus you trying to hold something in your hand and your your, your handshakes and all that. We, the, the utility clamp with the ring stand is a great um, device. Wash bottles. This is not a squirt gun. We will use this a lot. Each station will have a wash bottle. It'll be contained not tap water, but distilled water. Distilled water, of course, is water that's had all the minerals removed. And we will use it to rinse out equipment. Um, so there is a, a procedure that we will learn when we're in lab as to how you go about um, cleaning anything, because usually it's with soapy tap water and then a final rinse in distilled water. And this is where you'll find the distilled water um, in here. We have to purchase the distilled water from usually Walmart. Um, it's 88 cents a gallon. Um, so it's not, you know, it's cheap, but it's not inexpensive. So it's not something we waste. We have to be very cautious of it. But again, this year, especially with our COVID situation, when we're back into class, we have to be real careful that we're not messing around and playing games. Because it's real easy to like, oh, I'm going to squirt you in the face with this. Not this year especially with masks. Um, wire gauze. This is a piece of equipment that goes over a ring uh, on a ring stand. And you would set it over that. You could put a, a glass beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask. You could heat it with a flame below. This white pad you, is a heat resistant um, um, pad so that the wire doesn't get so hot that it melts when you're heating. So we use it in conjunction. When we have to do that, I'll show you the setup in class, but usually you need to, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to know the names of these. So that when I say you need a ring, a ring support, wire, gauze, you're kind of got the idea of what we're looking for. So with all of that in mind, I want you to create kind of a reference table of the notes that I just gave you. So in one note, you'll find this assignment is called lab uh, equipment identification. And in here, I'm going to ask you to type in the um, function here, and then you need to find a picture of it. Um, I would ask you to go to the internet and save a picture and insert it back into this table versus simply trying to um, clip the equipment pictures that I put in this presentation. It's because um, things can look different. Um, and a lot of the pictures that I used were actual photographs of our, our equipment, but not all of our equipment looks like that because there's various different kinds of funnels, bunts and burners, et cetera. So this one you will do. Um, we're not using its learning anymore, and I always forget to change this from years past. But when we get into Summit next week, I'll show you where you're going to submit this as a Summit checkpoint um, for that presentation. So this would be your assignment for today is to complete this. Um, you must have taken the element and polyatomic ion practice test twice. If you haven't done that yet, um, you need to go back and make sure that that has been taken twice. Um, if I see that you haven't taken it twice, I will be sending you a personal remind message later today so that you know that you need to do, you know, you haven't taken it the second time or I haven't seen what either times that you have taken it. Um, and hopefully, probably you could do it later today or um, over the weekend since we do have a long weekend. Remember um, that, you know, we have a weekend. Labor Day weekend, three day weekend coming up. So, um, so this I will be doing these videos for different lectures that I actually present in class or over Zoom, so that if you need to go back or if you miss a day, you can always go back and see what we we did when I said we did a lecture on X, Y, and Z. You'll find this video on the OneNote page with the PowerPoint printout. So. And that's your job. Let's get started on this assignment.